Hi, my name is Regis Philibert. I work at the uh, New Dynamic, where we uh, build websites with Hugo almost every day. And we try and, you know, be part of the community by sharing all of the modules that we've built throughout the years. We also have a, a Hugo framework called Huge, which I really encourage you to uh, look up. And today I want to tell you about uh, Hugo Get Remote, which is the latest addition in the suite of features available uh, through Hugo Pipes. Hugo Pipes is Hugo's own little build tools, its own little webpack to process your scripts, your CSS, uh, you know, you can minify, concatenate, anything you want really. And it was uh, limited to local files from your assets directory. But uh, recently it got Get Remote. And Get Remote allows you to process any files from the internet, any public files you can download and process through Hugo Pipes. It's already great in itself, but it became my go to solution to perform HTTP requests with Hugo because it has a great error handling and you can pass any method you want, post, boot, delete. You can also fine tune your headers, which is very convenient for authentication, for example. And you can post any body, which is uh, very convenient for GraphQL, as we're gonna talk about it later. It also allows you to cache the requests, so you don't have to ping that API 20 times an hour if you don't need to. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, tell you everything you need to know about Get Remote and how it changed my life as a a Hugo user. We'll start with the most basic request of them all, a, a, a get request on a, on a static API that I've got running here at that, at that URL. It lists uh, hundreds of monsters. Each of them has a title, a location where they've been spotted, an image that's hosted on the API, and you know, simple, simple keys like that. So the first thing we want to do and we're going to be using with a lot on that uh, tech talk. It's it just makes it everything much uh, easier. If you're not familiar with it, just know that anything that success will be passed down here. So, for example, here's the thing here with resources, get remote, you know, the name of our method and then the URL for the API. Now, what you will do is it will try for that URL. And whatever it gets, it'll treat it as a file. It'll download it, and then we have a file. And if we were to publish that JSON file that's hosted on that by that API, we could use rel permalink, uh, we could use name to display it, and et cetera. But what we really want to focus on today is the content of that file, because that's where all of the JSON string goody is stored. So um, again, with the content of that file that we've just pulled out of the internet, uh, we'll just debug it really easy this way. And here you go. Now what we've got is a big JSON string. You see it's an array and there's objects in it and et cetera, et cetera. That, that's fine and dandy, but this is not really something we can exploit because we want to create a list of those monsters on our index page. So what we'll be using is a, a very useful function from Hugo that's called unmarshal. It's, it's part of the transform object. So again, using with, with the result of that, so that JSON string, with that JSON string, we're gonna be using transform unmarshal on it. And now if I debug it, as you can see, what we have is a more uh, Hugo-ish kind of thing with the interface, the slice, and then all of the maps inside of them. So now I can rage on this and use those keys as I would with any Hugo page, Hugo slice, scratch, whatever. So let's do that. We're gonna be ranging now on our monsters that have been transformed from the JSON string, which is the content of that file we downloaded with Get Remote. Uh, we'll be using a very basic div with some class, uh, P4, I'll, I won't bore you with that. Here, we have the title. And voila, so now we have all of our monster, monsters uh, title. And we could make it a little bit more interesting by displaying more stuff. So first, let's just grab the first three monsters. And then what we could do so let's say the title will be there and now we know we have an image for each of those monsters so we could simply do that image and uh yeah probably had a class so it has a width yeah how does it look okay yeah we're ugly and stuff but so we've been 
pulling that list of monsters from that very steady KPI, and we transform that JSON string into some Hugo data that we can use in our template with the title. And uh, what I would want to get into now is a little bit is more complexity because a get request is very easy, but sometimes it's a little bit more complicated. So I'll I'll, I'll dump that I'll, I'll forget about that steady API for now, and I'll be using more robust API that have been designed by real API professionals. We'll be starting by using Maily Search. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. It's a it's a search solution that's uh, pretty much like Ogolia, except you can host it yourself, which we've been using a lot of the new dynamic. It's it's easier for cost, but it works the same way. You have a list of index, indexes, and then you push documents on them, and then you have a front-end library that you can use to just uh, search those. So we're not going to be using any front-end uh, library today. We're just going to use their API. Um, but yeah, that, that's what it does. So let's start and do exactly that. Now, the simple thing we can do is you know get their URL. So the URL that we have is our own little uh, one, <clears throat> it's that, and then we want to fetch the index called HugoConf um, and the, uh, just the documents. Okay, so now we have an error called unauthorized. We know what this is, and you know it's not going to happen that too many times because we know how to, to fix those. But it's not great that it breaks the build. We would really love to be able to either skip the call if there's an error behave accordingly, and interpret the error, et cetera, et cetera. So um, first, let me simplify this. We'll get back to a very ugly thing. Um, get remote returns that file, that object that has a content and a name. And if there's a problem with the call, then you get another method called error. If that error is there, you obviously have an error. So with an error, you do this. And if there's no error, then we can put that thing in there, respecting indentation, because I don't want to confuse everyone with all of my widths. And now it should be good. Okay, so now what it does is that it prints the error. And you can see that the, the first thing is a little bit ugly and hard to read, so you just know that there's an error. But it also has a data in there and that data contains some more interesting information. For example, you have data, uh, body, uh, sorry, data, body, and now you have more information. You have the error type, the error code, and you know it's missing an authorization header. So with that in mind, we need to authenticate ourselves, it seems. Uh, with Maily, it's pretty straightforward. All you need is a key inside of your headers uh, that contains the token for mailing. So the way that you pass headers to your get remote is, is just uh, using the options. The options, there are several stuff that you can use. We'll review uh, all of them later, but for now we'll be focusing on, um, well, we can, we, can, we can already talk about method, obviously. So method here, by default it's get, but we're gonna just write it again for clarity. And then below, we'll have our headers. And for now, we only have one. So we also create a dict here. It's called um, xmaily API key. Let me just paste it here. And then the value will be whatever you have as a environment variable or, you know, for that project, I added it to a data file called env and it's maily key. Now I've got my options uh, with my method and my headers, and I'm gonna pass them as the second argument to uh, get remote. So get remote as a first argument takes the, the URL, and as a second option, a second argument takes the options here. And now you can see that I don't have any error anymore, so we've skipped this, we're in our else, and the else has that very simple entry. There's only one entry in my index for now, um, but that's how you authenticate yourself, at least on Melee and other API that use a token, but it's usually gonna be using headers anyway, so that was a good illustration. Okay, get is good, but you know, it's gonna be more interesting to be able to actually use Hugo to update 
the list of documents that we have in our index. And for that, we can use uh, the same URL, the same endpoint, but with the post method. And then as part of the body, get all the documents that we want. Um, let's, let's try and do that very quickly. Uh, let me remove this first. I think what we want to do is just that. Okay. So that's, that means we need a body and the body will be a JSON string, uh, that we need to send to Mailey. And so body will be a JSON string with, I think it will be an array and we need an ID. Let's make it maybe this one and then a title. Um, hello, what's up is actually going to be the title of our thing. And that's it. Oh, and that should actually be an object. So that's, you know, ugly, but that's how we're going to be art coding our new entry into the index so that now we have a new index. So we're going to be calling it post and then I need to pass the body as well. So the body will be body. And now let's see what happens. So I've got an error, unsupported media type. That's because in my headers, I'm going to need to add the um, content type. So here, content type is application JSON. Yep, forgot a comma. You know what? Let's, uh, we're going to trust you, though. That's going to be easier. So it's actually a slice with a, only one dick map inside id is whatever and the title is hey what's up and we'll just identify it so this way i'm not the one writing the json here because i'm obviously not very good at this json if i here you go good so now what we are returned by Mailey is an update ID. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it, but it just tells you if, it, if it's been performed well, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you wanna grab that, you just get the update ID number eight and then you get all the data. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fetch my, uh, my documents instead of updating. So the only thing I gotta do actually is to change the method to get again. So it's another get method. And now I should have my, the list of all of my documents. And you can see I've got pride and prejudice and I also have, hey, what's up? So what I just did now is push a new document to Mailey. And if I keep the same ID, obviously, and push it again, but I update the title, hey, what's up, Joe? Again, post, all right, I've got another update here. And if I do another get, it, it, whatever. And if I do another get, then I can see I've got, hey, what's up, Joe? It's just updated that entry and not a new one. Now, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. But what would be more convenient is to be able to grab something from our own site and put it up there. And it's not going to be that complicated. You can see I've got a, a content directory here with a few posts in there. Hey, gorgeous, morning, beautiful, whatever. And I'm going to push that and add it to Mailey. And, uh, and it's, it's going to be very straightforward actually, because now I only have uh, Hugo data to bother with. So let's make it simple. Uh, we have our post from that or slice an empty one, but we're going to be ranging on site regular pages. Actually, you know what? That's the clause. Everybody know where site regular pages. Type this post and I'm gonna append to the posts a list of things, a map actually with an ID. Uh, so the ID will be the file unique ID. It'll be easier. The title will be, will be the title. And I think we have an author thing. So the author will be parents author yeah which is me beautiful and now i've got a list of posts in the post thingy and all i've got to do 
is as my body, I'm going to add posts JSONify. Um, let's switch that to post. It worked. Update ID is number 10. And now if I get everything, and we're going to be able to um, get something a bit more classy again, like we used to. Let's range on them. Okay. All right, and here you can see, so I've got my Pride and Prejudice, what's up, Joe, it's just gone. But then, so I didn't delete those, but I just added those that I had from my side. So now, with that very simple code, whenever your uh, editors are gonna be adding a new blog post and you're gonna be publishing that site, then um, Hugo, on itself, during the build, will grab the posts and just push them to Mailly. There's no serverless functions to be needed. You can just entrust you to do that for you. And that's pretty convenient when you think about it. That's one of the great power of Get Remote. Now that it has any set of methods, any set of body that you can pass, you can fetch the error and you know interpret them. Uh, I think it's pretty neat. Now let's talk about GraphQL as it will be the last part of our talk. Um, GraphQL is the modern ways chosen by many to interact with an API. Whatever the backend technology you're using on your API, you can add a GraphQL layer, which will allow your users to interact with it in a very elegant way, um, you know, using this kind of syntax for your query and then retrieve whatever you want. Um, Shopify is what we're gonna be using today because they have a great GraphQL API. It's called the Storefront API and it allows you to just retrieve the data for, of your shop. So you can use uh, Hugo, for example, to build the front of your shop while, you know, fetching the data from the API. You can't, you can't post anything. You, can, you cannot create a new product, for example, but you can read it. It's a read on the API that is using GraphQL. And as part of their tool, tool sets, they have uh, that little, uh, you know, GraphQL preview thingy, which you can use to, you know, preview what you're going to get with a certain query. So let's say I want... Uh, the products, the first three products, uh, that's how it's going to be uh, looking. By default, you get the edges that list all of your nodes. And then in each node, you have, uh, the, I want a title and the description. And this is what I get with ID, title, description. There's very, I mean, GraphQL is an amazing thing. You can create your schema and everything. Uh, most, you know, I'm not going to review everything, but what something that I, I like to use is the fact that you can easily rename um, the keys. So, for example, now, even though it's titled in the API, I'm going to be having a name in my as part of my request. Uh, same thing for the description. I want it to be called summary, so I'll just do it this way, and boom, I get name and summary. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And that's, you know, give you some context of what we're gonna be using to illustrate the best way to interact with GraphQL and Hugo. So let's do this. First, we'll get rid of that. Okay, so we have the post method. I need to update the key in my headers. Uh, the authentication system is the same, except of course it's, use, it's using a different key. I've stored it in my data file as Shopify um, API token. Okay, and the application is GraphQL, not JSON. The URL is also different. It's unique for every store, so make sure you get it right. Here we go, here are the options, and then I need the body. Uh, the body is gonna be that same thing. I'm gonna be using backticks to make sure right, there's nothing in there that it doesn't understand. Uh, okay. And here I go. So obviously this is not what I'm supposed to get. I'm gonna get a data products, whatever. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we have a data with the product, with the edges, and then each edges is stored in a node. 
So if we want to do this right, we're going to need to do with data products range on the products and then with node. I I know, I know this is the this is hell indentation, but just bear with me. And now we have the node and inside we have our ID, we have our name. Uh, can I, yes, for its name. Uh, let's make it a div. It looks like I'm having fun with uh, front end here, but I just wanted to make it good. <laughs> let's make it bold. Bold, okay. Ah. Edges. Yes, and here we are. We have our coffee grinder, and this is summary. That's how you can pretty conveniently um, get a GraphQL call. Now, that's not really, I mean, this is going to be very, this is going to get much more complicated. That's a pretty simple uh, GraphQL, po GraphQL body here. So, and you don't have GraphQL in GraphQL syntax highlighting. It's not really great. So what I would do is yet again, use the many benefits of Hugo pipes, you know, with the assets thing so that I can store that in its own GraphQL file and then grab its content to populate the body of my request. So let's do that right now. <clears throat> I have an asset thing. I'm going to store it under uh, Shopify, makes a little bit more sense. Products, that's the name of my kind of request, products GraphQL. Now I can paste that in here and it's beautiful. It's, it's, uh, it's highlighted the way I like it with GraphQL, Prettier, et cetera, et cetera. Now I can save this. And now the way that I'm going to retrieve my body is um, <clears throat> body let's say body is an empty string and then with um, resources get now that's the way you get a local resource something was not covered much here and it's in uh, Shopify slash products GraphQL if you find this then I need its content and I want you to store that content in my body variable and out here just exactly the way it is so now we have a body that's just exactly that and i can put it here body and if i save we're going to get the exact same result that's pretty interesting because now you know i can just work from there so for example if i only want one product i can just update that graphql query here and i only get one product if we want to go a little bit further and, for example, grab the image, um, I think that's featured image, featured image, I get the ID, uh, I want, what is, is that the URL? Yes, URL. Okay, so if I want to add the URL to my query for that image, I need to just add this to my uh, products.graphql file, uh, part of the query. Okay, now I know I've got the image somewhere and uh, let's put that in, sorry, in a flex. And now I've got the div with the image. So with featured image URL and I'm, I'm going to add an image with just that and uh, class. With, I don't know, okay, and here we go. Now I've got my image beautifully stretched. <laughs> it's a beautiful grinder, and uh, and everything happened in there. So it's pretty great. You can have as many files as you want. Each file, a uh, file for each of your the request that your store. I mean, your Hugo project will need to fetch different aspect of your store, and then uh, I think it's limitless, and it's going to be. It's great that you can componentize all of your files and queries into uh, GraphQL files. So that's why I also wanted to cover this as part of that little talk about how great it is that you can use Hugo pipes, not only to get a GraphQL request, but also to handle 
its own queries as part of a Hugo pipe asset file. And that's it. Quick word before I go, this is my website, uh, my full name.com. There's a lot of resources about Hugo in there if you want to take a look. I've got a Twitter handle, obviously, my full name again. And you can find me under the Hugo Discourse. Username is Regis. That's my avatar. So just come and say hi. Thank you. Thank you.